I want to cover some SQL Server history with you just a second. And your first inclination here may be, wait a minute, I don't need to know this junk. Well, you might. What I want to do is give you, kind of arm you with some information so that when you see a certain version of SQL Server, you know what you're up against. Because trust me, there's still a lot of this stuff out there. Now, SQL 4.2, you probably won't see too much of, unless you're in some sort of museum or something. But what happened is Microsoft jumped into the, the SQL database world around about October 1992 with, I guess, what you would call kind of a pre-release of SQL 4.2. The database explosion had begun, thanks to Ashton Tate's DBase products and, and some other things. And in October 1992, Microsoft partnered with Sybase and began to uh, try to build a more robust database engine. And SQL 4.2 came from that. SQL 6.0, to my knowledge, is the first true public release of a database product from Microsoft like this. That came about in June 14, 1995. Then SQL 6.5 came along about April 1996. Now, as you can see, we're not really going that far back in history. This, this technology is still relatively new. Now, SQL 6.5 was the first serious entry, I guess you would say, uh, into the database market. This is the time when a lot of people and companies really began to take this seriously and look at it and say, wow, we can really do something with this. Now, keep in mind, there was a tremendous leap from 6.0. So the difference between 6.0 and 6.5 was tremendous. Round about the 6.0, 6.5 time is when Microsoft really started to get the idea of how to build this, uh, start to get their hands and their minds around how to actually bring this off. So the real magic for a SQL Server in the Microsoft world started at version 7.0. Now this came out in January 1999. Now SQL 7.0 was a turning point for Microsoft and this is important for you, believe it or not, because when you get out there and begin to do database administrative work or if you're already a database administrator, you're well aware that Anytime you see SQL 7.0, you kind of start to get a little nervous because this is the first place where Microsoft really began to, for lack of a better term, get it right. And you, there's a fair amount of backward functionality, but you're really reaching the outer edges now. SQL 7.0 was where Microsoft realized, hey, wait a minute. For what we're trying to do with data, we can't do it the way we've been trying to build it at 6.5, 6.0, 4, and so forth. So SQL 7.0 was a total rewrite. As a matter of fact, when it was all said and done, 85% of the SQL 7 code was a complete rewrite from 6.5. So this really was a new product. They, they kept the name for marketing purposes and, and for familiarity, but this really was a new product. It came out in January 1999. It introduced some really cool things, DTS and so forth. This new architecture really worked. People liked it. It looked and felt very access-like. They really hit a home run with this product. Then, in August 2000, Microsoft released SQL 2000. With this, they introduced XML functionalities into the database. They really beefed up architecture. They beefed up DTS. If you don't know what that is, just hang on. You'll see later. And the product really grew up. This is where we've been. Now, this is really strange for Microsoft. We set at SQL 2000 for about five years, okay, for a little over five years, as a matter of fact. And if you're familiar with Microsoft and their release schedules, this is uh, somewhat unusual. So SQL 2000 has been the standard. Then SQL 2005 has received a lot of fanfare. Microsoft has spent a lot of money preparing this product. This was just released November 2005. Now. One thing you need to understand from a DBA standpoint, you want to see your users or your environment at least on SQL 2000. Uh, as soon as possible, of course, you want to get to SQL 2005 for some of the new bells and whistles and tools and stabilities and so forth. But the farther you go back from SQL 2000, the more issues you're going to have with backward compatibility and stability and so forth. So that's why I wanted to give you this history. If you hear someone say 6065, uh, some bells and whistles need to go off. So we're going to concentrate in this course on SQL 2005. If you have knowledge of SQL 2000, it may help you a little bit, and I'm going to do my best to teach this course as if you've never touched SQL 2000. But if you have, I'm also going to try to put some things in here that will really help you get up and running faster on SQL 2005. So that's the very brief nutshell type history of SQL Server.